Hi everyone, and thanks for watching. I hope you and your family are doing well as all of us continue to adjust to a series of new norms. Whether it's foregoing a friendly handshake, meeting someone for coffee, or donning a fashionable mask, it's easy to get caught up in all of the change. It wasn't too many days ago when I found myself caught up in some of the busyness of planning groceries, sanitizing things, and unpacking that my oldest daughter, Tobin, had to remind me to play soccer with her. Only a few hours had passed since I made plans with her to play in our backyard, yet I had already forgotten. I don't know about you, but I get distracted very easily. Just ask many of our youth students, and I'm sure they'll each tell you a time uh, or a story when I chased a rabbit trail during a message or conversation. Being able to remember an important fact or event is one thing, but what if there is another way to remember? What if we have misunderstood the intent of a word that seems so straightforward? Consider one of the most widely known phrases of Jesus during the Last Supper. His words are recorded in Luke chapter 2, verse 19. He says, Do this in remembrance of me. Do you remember? Jesus is at the Last Supper with his disciples, and he had just taken some bread and broke it. And I've been to many churches where they have an altar or table with this inscription, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus was establishing the unique ceremony of what we now call the Lord's Supper. But why mention the word remember? When you think of how to remember Jesus, do you think Jesus wanted us to recall the historical event of the Last Supper? Did he want us to recite the happenings during the institution of this church ordinance? You see, this is what I mean we might have misunderstood what Jesus intended when we remember him. Largely for a Western mindset, to remember is simply to recall information about something. But in that context, in Jewish culture, it would have involved a whole other layer of participation in some defining event. You know, for those of you who are married, what does it mean for you to remember your anniversary? Would the day come and you turn to your bride of 25 years and say, Ah, yes, honey, I do remember. It's today. And then nothing else? Does not your remembrance of this event cause you to to maybe wear something special, go out somewhere special, and, and gift something special? This is the kind of remembrance Jesus was referencing when he was teaching his disciples about communion. In remembrance of him, would cause them to take part in this extremely special ceremony, a reminder and an action to engage them in the powerful gospel message of Jesus. Although while we're at home, we we probably will not be observing Lord's Supper, consider this. How might you and your family, in the same way, set aside a time to interrupt all the craziness going on and take a special action to remember Jesus? Why not Turn your evening walk into a prayer walk, or at dinner, maybe gather at the table a few minutes early and spend the time sharing your favorite stories of how God moved in your life. Friends, I hope this Easter we're not satisfied with merely knowing facts from a page, but instead we invite those truths to impact us and influence our decision making. You know, there's a lot of news going on reminding us of reasons to be afraid and things to watch out for. But when we preach the gospel to ourselves, when we actively participate in remembrance of Jesus, my prayer is that you will have infinitely more reasons to be triumphant because of the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ.